Now pay now attention, pay attention to me, I've always I've tried always to teach you two things. First, First, never let, never them, let them, them see you bleed. And the second? Always, always have an escape plan. Good evening, good afternoon, whatever it may be, Bond fans. It's Christopher Morales, That One Bond Guy. And today we're back with another interview, part of my series, That One Bond Guy Meets. And I have a true, truly special one for you guys today. This is Bond Bonanza. And let's, let's take a few seconds to check out some of his work. It's my intro and outro. Beautiful work. When we came up with this project, you know, I just told him to have at it. You know, I wanted something that was different from everybody else. I wanted something that represented me. And he did exactly that. So I want to give the floor to you, my friend. Tell me what Bond Bonanza is all about. What Bond's, uh, Bond Bonanza is all about is, uh, well, I, I primarily focus on cinemagraphs. And taking photography from the photography from all all the Bond films, and taking little moments from them, and animating them using uh, applications on my phone. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't want to spoil what they are, but I kind of keep it like a little close to the chest, uh, so I can you know shroud myself in a bit of mystery there. But you know, uh, yeah, uh, just uh, consistently producing digital art. It's, well, if you guys haven't checked it out, you have to go check it out. He posts pretty much daily, um, just like he said, different scenes from different uh, films. So definitely check him out. I'll have his uh, name, Instagram name, uh, in the description below. But my friend, thank you so much for designing that for me. It was I was blown away beyond expectations. Kind of walk us through what what was in your mind, because I'm curious as well. I told you. You have free reign. Do do what you please. Do your own. Do you're the maestro in this, and I kind of I'm I'm kind of curious the the process you took on putting it all together. Well, first having seen and it was clear in my mind the uh, the Super Bowl spot and just the way that it kind of it reminded me the in the way that the the 007 slowly you know moves across the screen. Mm-hmm. In, in the Super Bowl spot. It reminded me, given what, I, what I've what i done with Final Cut Pro X and how I utilize those titles, uh, I kind of wanted to experiment, given that I was, you know, I had this opportunity to design, uh, like, whether it be a, you know, as you, as you mentioned, like a, an intro or outro a title. Uh, so I kind of wanted to see what I could do and how it could measure up to, well, I mean, those standards are a little different, but you know, mine I feel like is it mirrors that to a certain degree, which I like, and I feel like uh, you know I, I achieved what I wanted to with what I designed for you. Yeah, definitely. And you asked me what was my first Bond film, and I told you kind of the story. When I got into Bond, I, I it was first the whole Kingsman franchise. I watched the first two movies, and then my parents were all like, "Have you ever seen a Bond film?" That's where it, this is kind of. It's kind of the same thing. I said, okay, I'll check it out. So I I started, I did my research, and of course, the first movie being Dr. No, I wanted to start from the beginning. So I watched Dr. No, I told you that, and you inserted that pretty cool um, logo in there at the very end where it has that one Bond guy, my name, and then the 007 incorporated in with it. And I thought that was super cool, kind of, uh, kind of, reminiscing of my 
history of the first movie I saw. So I appreciate those little moments. It's pretty cool. Uh, but one thing I really do enjoy about the content that you give out in on Instagram is that no one else does it. I mean, the way that you do your digital art and the way that you incorporate it with 007, I think is super cool. And I feel like, have you tried to maybe enter the contest that's going on where you can create the uh, poster for the new film and possibly get picked to be featured or because i think you have a really good chance considered it but honestly i animate photographs i mean i don't know if i'd personally be able to design one myself it like it it, i take things that already exist right (laughs) like photography that already exists itself. So, I mean, yes, I could go the route of designing my own. Mm-hmm. And I do that with like having like the the slight movements of whether it be, you know, from a specific film, then I take that title and I slap it on there. And I, you know, I have whether it be like a, a blur type movement or just it shifting or anything like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there there are those digital pieces of art, but then you know they're just bonds in general. And I just have the 007 logo, so I mean like d- depending on what I guess it could be, there are a few pieces out there though, of of fan art that I feel I could animate, I could like augment it. That's what I do with everything. But yeah, no, like it, it ha- it's not like it hasn't crossed my mind that it would be amazing to you know design something uh, sim- similar to what they've you know, produced thus far with the yeah. posters, right? The character posters and all that, yeah. Um, so what you we've kind of been talking about this. Um, I know you said you have something in the film department, you said you have like uh, some background there. What is what, what is your what is your overall plan? What would you what would you love to do in the future wise when it comes to Yeah, um in terms of film in general, uh, I for one, I uh, I graduated in '09 from Ryerson University. I took film production originally in high school, and that carried over into like into Ryerson. The, the fact of the matter is, r- right now, um, I the, the there was, it was a bit difficult because uh, at Ryerson in '06, I was accepted not not to film but to theater. So mm-hmm. I took theater school. Uh, like it was a it was tech oriented right for one year and then I transferred to film so that was like my one in to actually get you know transfer over to film studies so for the like the, the, the last three years I I took film studies it was it was night school almost mm-hmm. most of the time um, but I graduated with everyone else everyone that I knew from from theater school I graduated with them at the same time. That was cool. And then, yeah, so coming back around, I went off on my own mm-hmm. and uh, I, I, I traveled across Canada in the Katimovic program and I returned and I started to direct surrealist films. Nice. And that caught the attention of a dear friend of, of my family, Aaron Tager. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may not know his name, but you definitely know his face. He's known as Dr. Vink from Are You Afraid of the Dark? Oh, okay. And uh, he plays one of the one of the first characters that you see in the X-Men film of in 2000. And it caught his attention and uh, having screened some of my, my work at the Fox Theater in Toronto. And I directed a documentary based on his life as an artist actor. And that was released in 2013. It won Best uh, Best documentary feature wow. at the TOND Film Fest. So that kind of like it it brought things to uh to a certain level where uh, you know like I could I could move forward with certain things uh just in terms of getting it's not like I want to be recognized. It's not you know like it's not so much that I, I vie for that but right now like I'm you know I, I'm carried o- I've carried over to the point at which at this Right now, I'm I'm focusing on a lot of writing, but it just it feels like I may gonna I may direct my attention attention to something different. That being, 
if I mean, if it's any indication how you how you've uh, responded <laughs> to the, the like the title that I designed for you, as well as Brian John, uh, James Bond aficionado, like it that should you know that that's kind of like an indicate if that's any indication, it it I mean, it, it kind of it I think title design would work for me no by no means am i a graphic designer but i mean what you see if i mean if that if that works out well and i mean i've, I've done it in the past for like a a lot of like music mm -hmm. uh lyrical music videos and which you see the titles on screen of the lyrics and there are visuals that go along with that you can find it even on my youtube channel like i've done uh various covers of uh various like music uh, lyrical music video covers of uh, of Goldfinger, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the Man with the Golden Gun, Thunderball, uh, from Russia with Love, uh, yeah. But like they're all like futuristic. They're oh, all like, I've, I've kind of modernized them in a sense. So all the visuals there, but like the, like the titles are on screen too. So these musical, like these lyrical videos, they function as title sequences as well. Like I haven't necessarily told the musicians that. Mm. but uh you know it, it, it works out in that sense too where i can you know it can it can function as such and uh, i mean well, making like smaller short video things like that yeah. you know that are like a, a minute long right right you know and just having the reveals their title reveals right that you know i when i first saw it you know i was blown away i was like is this really for me? Like, wow, this is something you would see in like a channel that's been around for, for years. Like for example, like the bond experience, uh, you would see something of that caliber on one of his intros or something like that. But you know, I, I, you know, that's why I'm so excited to have it and be able to talk to you because, you know, I was not expecting, I was expecting something short, something simple, just like my title, pop up i was literally looking for like a title pop up and then the music or maybe even some voice in the back i don't know but when you presented that to me i was completely blown away let's get into some kind of some fun questions how did you get into james bond and, and the whole franchise i first discovered james bond through uh coming across the uh, the vhs tapes that belong to my aunt and uncle and they had a small collection and I borrowed the tapes from them, and I began to watch them out of order, mind you. <laughs> so it wasn't like it was doc as with you, Doctor No. But I, I did like Doctor No was. It came later, right? right. Uh, so like I, I, I clearly remember seeing uh, one of the first being uh, well, obviously Golden Eye. Um, <laughs> uh, that being uh, the second. Uh, firstly. Uh, the Living Daylights. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I have a fun memory in which it, even before I uh, I came across the, uh, the VHS tapes that my aunt and uncle owned, the small collection, my my brother and my dad, we uh, we, we came across, uh, we rented The Living Daylights from Roger's Video. Oh. And that was up and running, right? And I, I honestly just thought it was an action thriller isolated on its own. I was unaware that it was part of a bigger picture, a much bigger picture. So I, after, like, I thought it was, it was an amazing film. It was great. It was, you know, enjoyable. But, you know, I, I hadn't really wrapped my head around that it was part of a franchise that I was, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, like, it wasn't when I was, like, I, I've always known that I've wanted to be part of the film world in some capacity. But uh, after having seen that you know it kind of it, it tempted me to uh to see the other films and you know like as as i mentioned you know i didn't necessarily necessarily see them in uh in order or anything like that but uh, after having seen the films you know i was curious and i started to watch certain clips from the different films online and i started to connect the dots mm -hmm. right and then you know Come Christmas, I asked for a collection, not not the collection that my aunt and uncle owned, but a collection of James Bond films from my mother and father, in which I got. And then it became almost like, uh, 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 like, uh, 
every break, like every Christmas, I would watch, you know, the, those films, right, <laughs> at Christmas time because I don't, I associated it with such, right. Mm. But but once the like the collection started growing, you know, and this was before the DVDs, you know, like the DVD collection came out, like special edition DVDs, right? So I, it was just like it was it was just the VHS, and I I built that collection up, and you know I started watching them. I started watching them in order because you know I I kind of I there's the uh, MI6 website, and I remember like fondly like when I was younger that kind of how I was like going about finding all these clips and you know reading about it mm. and just like yeah no it was so from there uh it just uh it went from Christmas to summer mm-hmm. so every year <laughs> it's like it's, it's ritual that I watch it every year all of them I can't just watch one film though mm-hmm. for me it's like if I watch one film I watch them all I like, and it was even with like speaking of which, like Superstation as well. Like I was speaking with Brian about that too. Um, I remember seeing them all on Superstation. Like when I didn't own the entire collection, I'd watch. I you know I take the opportunity to watch those films, and that was hosted by John Cleese, right? Mm. <laughs> it was at a point in which, okay, yeah, uh, Die Another Day had been released, right? Because henceforth, why he like he was hosting it. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean like. The, the the only not, I mean not to say that he wouldn't be interested in hosting such a marathon right mm-hmm. of such uh, on TBS or anything like that but it kind of makes sense given that he plays R in Die Another Day you know that he go and do this right or he plays Q but he was yeah he was R in uh, the world is not enough yeah um, nevertheless so. Uh, the, the, yeah, the show I as I didn't own all of them at first, you know, watching them on Superstation was a big, you know, was a big thing for me, and I liked marathoning them through that. And then, you know, it slowly I slowly delved into like uh, encyclopedias that I had. Oh, uh, nice. And I started to read about it a lot, you know. And I do each year, you know, it's it's fun to kind of go back and look at the. Uh, the encyclopedias that I looked at, you know, when I was younger, which is nice. Nice, nice. And yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, and that's, I have a marathon each year. Yeah, that's great. I I can't imagine how long you're sitting there. That's like I can't even count how many hours that is. They average out to about two to two this, hours well, each, especially the older ones. So. Every day, every day I watch one. Like every okay. year. every day, every other day. It's like I, I even made like schedules for myself okay. on paper, like when I would watch them and like the order, like it was, it's almost like memorizing them too, like writing them all down Okay. and like making a schedule of these James Bond films that I would watch. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that kind of, I guess that's how like I kind of built up my knowledge. Right. You know, and, and not to mention, you know, getting the encyclopedias and going through them and reading about all the characters and, you know, even like golden I 64, like that's how I was first introduced to Baron Samadhi. Like I was aware, like live and let live and let die did exist, but I didn't know he was in, he was from that film. Like I, I knew him as a, as a character, as a villain, you could play in multiplayer from GoldenEye 64, right? Yeah. And I had, like, I had close friends as well, and they were really into GoldenEye 64, and that's kind of how, you know, I kind of got roped into kind of, like, just delving into, like, the bigger world of things, and just talking to them about it, and yeah. That's cool. That's awesome. You know, I think everyone has their own bond story and have one that's associated with the fond memory like getting it for christmas and that's that's pretty special so uh, i know for me when i got the i actually i did something similar i got the uh the um blu-ray like all 24 movies on blu-ray um so we just moved into this house about maybe two years ago so with that came like new tvs and all that which was pretty cool so i had to make sure i got the best quality of film so i got the blu-ray from an old store that was kind of kind of like blockbusters kind of like you know that they used to have up here in in my neck of the woods but they they've closed it down recently was like 
a few months ago they closed it down sadly it was called dimple records where they'd have record like vinyl records and or, or music or vhs's or the you know the tracks all that cool stuff and then you know they got ran they got bankrupt because of netflix all that you know the story but oh, yeah. yeah i got they are having a sale and i had to go check and see maybe maybe they had the collection maybe they have some type of collection or maybe i could just get them individually on dvd just so i can have they had the blu-ray collection which is usually like 150 i got for 75 and so from that point on i watched them all over again but in the quality that was just it was so clear and every single time i watch one again i just i can't believe how good it looks and it's so cool that you know it, it just kind of enhances the experience so that's where i started and that's how i got through all of us through the blu-ray set but um no yeah that that's pretty sweet um I love what you do. I love the content that you put out. Um, and it's so cool that you are consistent with it. Um, because I, I feel like there's a lot of accounts out there that, you know, they do, they have their own little thing that, you know, I mean, there's a bunch of accounts out there that do the same thing. They repost the same stuff. They re, they talk about the same stuff, but there's not, um, there's few count, accounts out there that have their little something about them that makes them special and better than, all the other accounts out there and you know whether it's like bond experience with his whole collection or or um the bond armory talking about weapons of james bond and you know now we have you out here with like the art you know with the digital art and all of that cool stuff that you literally just post about you don't talk about a lot of the politics or the things about it you just simply show off your work and i think that's super cool to have and you know i look forward to whatever comes towards the future and i mean it kind of leads to my closing question here what is in the works for bond bonanza come future wise whether it's leading up to no time to die or after no time to die what do you have any plans of expanding it to anywhere else or anything in mind well I mean, given that I have the videos on YouTube, I, I really like that I've produced those. And having listened to the No Time to Die theme yesterday, uh, it uh, I possibly considered creating a lyrical music video for that. With not not only just against a uh, uh, a still background, mm -hmm. but like actual, you know visuals that would work well with that i mean i don't want to cramp daniel kleinman's style or anything like that but if you listen to the lyrics it'd be very you know they 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 do hint at like little plot right. points in the film i feel it does like and then no time to die <laughs> and what we're gonna see so if anything i think i'd I'd like to possibly produce something along the lines of that for the theme that was just released. I, I'm one that uh, is quite fond of it personally, at least. Like I, I listened to her, her song "Everything That I Wanted" mm -hmm. a little while ago, in kind of in preparation because I love each Bond film for a different reason, and uh, the music plays a, a major part in as to how it's so popular now if it wasn't for that i mean not not to mention like the the, the complex uh you know connotations of of, of such uh, uh themes uh, that are uh, explored in each one <laughs> right uh it's it's the it's the music that plays them and you see it like throughout like they have you know the each one kind of like they uh they kind of lend their own orchestral, you know, like, uh, uh, I, I'm by no means a musician either, but, you know, I, I do know that, uh, I, I realize as a filmmaker, uh, you know, the, the music or like the, the, the search and the, yeah, the music, like, especially in Tarantino's films, for instance, and this is, you're speaking to the filmmaker side of Nathaniel now, <laughs> not so much, right? You know, like, but honestly, uh, uh, in terms of Tarantino's films, you know, he he goes through a, a record collection of all his music mm -hmm. and, you know, he tries to find the spirit of the film. Right. And and each Bond film is like that in which, you know, they, they have the 
the specific theme that, that that carries throughout the film, you know, that brings out the the spirit of the movie, the you know, yeah. whichever one it may be, but they kind of like yeah, okay, it's it's different with the theme that we hear at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then like the, there are these alterations of it, you know, whether it be orchestral or not, but it still has that, you know, like for instance, live and let die, you know, we hear different right. versions of that throughout the film. Right. Yeah. So um, I think it'll be interesting to see how Hans Zimmer and Billy Eilish kind of work oh, yeah. together on I that, heard. right? You know, <laughs> I heard about that one, yeah. yeah. And we heard a little bit of Hans Zimmer too in there, yeah. like he he's responsible for uh, a, a portion of the, uh, mm-hmm. the theme itself, right? So, I mean, I think it would be really interesting to see if I can, as long as I don't break any copyrights. Oh, or yeah, like that. that. I just know that, like, recently someone, uh, they tried posting, like, a lyric video of it, just against a still background, or it's slightly moving, not, not much, though, anything, but they it was taken down, so I don't know. Um, even so, I'm going to continue to uh, to produce digital art and uh, post that almost every day, <laughs> awesome. as long as I can, um, and uh, titles. Okay, cool. Like I may I may go about, I mean, I'm not quite certain yet, but we'll see whether there are any others that contact me regarding yeah. titles or intros or whatnot uh, pertaining to bond accounts or yeah. anything of that. Yeah. Well, my friend, thank you so much for the time okay. today. It was so much fun talking to you and seeing the mastermind behind my beautiful outro slash intro and getting to know you on a personal level as always like i tell everybody if you need anything from me or whatever i'm all i'm always here my door's always open and i'm very happy to to meet you my friend excellent thank you very much so everyone follow von bonanza on where they can where can they find you i know instagram youtube instagram youtube uh as nathaniel fox pappas but I also have a website, chemicalkiss.com. It's with two Ks, chemicalkiss.com. It, uh, I post my narratives on that website. Everyone, check that out. Um, you know, tell them I sent you if you came from this video. Uh, let them, let, give them some love. You know, everyone is so great in the Bond community, which is something I really enjoy. And I think... Big things are coming for you, my friend, and I'm excited to see what happens and see how you get bigger in the future to come. So that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for tuning in to another episode and another interview. Um, I can't wait, like I always say, to continue the journey in the next video. And until then, I will see you guys later. Take care.